All right, so in this video, we want to see how we can upload images when we create a post and save that image in our local drive and also save the path into our database. So let's get started. First thing, we want to add the button to our create post form. So let's go to our dashboard view and in our form that is used for creating a post, first, we want to add the ink type attribute to the form itself because we want to work with files now and set the value of that to multi-part form data. Then we want to add an input of type file somewhere under post body. So I'm just going to make a comment and say post image and make it div with a margin bottom four. So we would have a label for image. I'm going to call that field image. That says cover photo. And then we want an input of type file. Let's call it image. The ID also image. And I think that's it. I want to keep it very simple. Yes. So that is our button. And I'm just going to copy this error state and paste it down here because we will have validations for this field as well. So we want to change this to image and we are done with our markup. Now, the next step is to go to our post controller where we handle a storing a post or saving a post in our database. And that is in our store method. Before we do anything, before all these validations and creating a post, let's just die and dump request and upload the file and see what we get. So in our form, if I choose a file and I'm going to select this one and then press create, we get our request object just like before and our fields are under request parameters, but our file is under files. So we have a dedicated category for files. And if we look under that section or category, we see our image. That's the name we used and also the uploaded file information. So it's an image of type JPEG and a bunch of other information. Now to upload this or store it in our application, basically in our folders, we can use the storage facade. So make sure it is imported up here from facades. Then we can use the put method, which is one of the methods that can be used to store a file. There are multiple ways and multiple methods that we can use. And I think put is the easiest one. And this method is looking for the path. So basically, where do we want to save it? And I just want to add here posts underscore images. So that is going to be the folder that our photo will be saved in. Then as a second argument for this put method, we need to pass the content. So the actual image we want to save. So we can just pass request, then the name of our input, which we call that image. So this will give us the actual file, which is this one. So let's just run this and see what happens. And I'm just going to add a die and dump that says OK after that, because I don't want to create a post. I just want to test this out. All right, so let's go back to our form and maybe I choose that file again press create and we get that okay. Now, if we go to our folders under storage, under app, we have our posts images and the image we uploaded. And you notice the name is a unique name generated by Laravel itself. And this is a nice way to keep our files name unique. All right, so by using the storage facade, we are saying that we want to save something into storage. That's why it goes to this folder, a storage folder. Then we say we want to add something in there using the put method. And by default, it goes inside the app folder. And whatever we pass inside this put method as the first argument would be the name of the folder. Now, if you wanted folders within that folder, you could just add more using the slashes. And of course, the file itself that would go within that folder. Now, this file is being saved under a storage app automatically or by default, because that is the default drive for Laravel. If we go to our config folder and then file systems, in this config file, Laravel defines the local drive for storing files. And by default, it is using the local file. That means it is accessible by our application alone. So it is not public, but there are other drives. If we want to make that public, we can use the public disk, which we will do it in a moment. And this will store our file under app public. So this will go under app, which is local, but for public, it goes inside the public folder. And you notice here, we have the properties of this public disk that shows the visibility of this is public. And we want to use the public disk because we want to make sure the posts images are public. All right, so we can close that one, go back to our controller. And in order to define the disk or the place that we want to save our file, we can just use the disk method and then chain the put method. So right before the put, we can say disk, and this will take the name of the drive we want to use. In this case, we want to say public. So let's run this again and see what happens now. We could just reload this page, which will submit the form, meaning 
we will have the image uploaded again so we get the okay and this time if we look under our storage app public we have our posts images so you notice the difference if we don't specify the disk by default it will go inside the app folder if we do use that disk function it will go inside the public folder and then whatever path we used here so this is fine but it is still in our a storage folder we want to make sure these are accessible in our public folder because this is the only folder that would be public when we deploy our app if we go to laravel documentation for a moment and under file storage we can go to the public disk and you notice here it says to make these files or basically our files accessible from the web we should create a symbolic link from our public storage so this folder to our local storage app public and this could be done through an artisan command which is a storage link basically this is just creating a shortcut of this folder inside our public folder so let's just copy this command and go to our terminal and paste it here so you notice it says link has been connected and if we look under our public folder now we have a storage folder which has this icon in front of it meaning that's a shortcut or a symbolic link and within that folder we have our posts images and it is not showing our app public then our folder it is directly going down to the folder which is within the public and that makes it very easy for us to access later on we just have to say we want to grab the files from storage then the name of our folder and files that we used so we don't need the local files and I'm going to delete this folder which is inside the app but we need to keep this one which is inside the public because that is the actual file and the one we have in the public folder it is just symbolic or a reference of that one now we are successfully uploading an image let's see how we can show it in our view for instance let's go to the home page and let's just show the image here so I'm gonna go to our index view and maybe right below that h1 I'm gonna have an image tag that would point to that folder now there are multiple ways we can do this but one way is to use the asset helper function so this function would automatically look inside our public folder and remember we want to go inside public storage post images then this file so in the asset helper function we can say a storage then posts images or whatever name you used and then the name of the file so i'm just going to copy it and the extension jpg and that's it so if we go to our website we have our image so of course we can show the image but this is not what we want so i'm going to delete this we want to upload the file through this store method in our post controller and save the path in our database and then show that image for each post so when users create a post they would have the option to upload an image and we will make it optional so it's not going to be required so in our store method i'm gonna cut this and move it right before the create post and i'm just gonna make a comment and say a store image if exists and i'm gonna get rid of that die and dump so before we get to storing the image we need to do a bit of validation so we called that input field image and there are many rules we can apply so for example i want to say this is a nullable field which means it is not required then i want to make sure it is a proper file then i want to say that the max value is maybe 1000 so this is the value in kilobytes and this is about one megabyte it's not exactly one megabyte but it's just close and i'm choosing one megabyte for now because i want to see the errors then we can also specify the extensions using the mimes rule for example we want png jpg and webp so these are the extensions i would expect and if it is not any of these we will get an error in fact let's just say webp because i don't have a webp image and see if we get an error for the extension let's test this out and see if we see our error i'm going to choose this image which is about 1.7 megabyte so it will give me an error there we go the image field must not be greater than 1000 kilobytes so that's the first one so i'm going to change this to 3 megabyte or 3000 kilobytes then i'm going to try to upload again so press create we get the image field must be file of type webp so we know our validations work so so then i'm going to add png and jpg again so that's the first part then since we are saying this is optional we don't want to assume there is always an image so we want to use an if statement here and move this statement inside the if block now for the condition we want to check the request object to see if it has a file so this function looks within the request object and see if there is a file with this name now we also need to save the path of this 
uploaded image so we can store it in our database this storage statement actually returns the path so if we save it inside a variable we can use it in our program so let's just die and dump that path and see what we get i'm just going to add something here so i would not get an error and the image press create we get posts images so that's the path we specified and then the name of the image which is auto generated by laravel and it is unique and the extension so this is what we want to save in our database but this path is inside the if block which means if the image doesn't exist this path doesn't exist so one way around it we can just create a path here outside of the if statement and set it to null basically if the image doesn't exist which means path is null and that's what we want to pass to this create method that would be saved in our database so now instead of passing fields as a variable down here we can use an array and just pass them one by one or we can use the fields variable and spread it so that is completely optional i'm just going to say title is going to be request title then i'm going to duplicate it change this to body and for the image I want to say that is going to be our path variable. If it exists, it's going to be a proper path. If it doesn't, it's going to be null. So this is all we have to do in terms of our store method in our controller. And we don't need this field variable, so we can get rid of that. But we need to prepare our database and post table to have this image column. And also our post model to say that we are expecting an image property to be filled through a form so let's start with our post model which is the easiest one we are saying we are expecting a title and a body and an image so that's all we have to do for our post model next step we want to go to our create posts table migration file and we want to add a new column so using the table variable and setting the type to string because it's not going to be a long text and we want to call this column image so this is defining the column and we want to make sure that this is not required by using this nullable function that means if it's null that's fine and that's it for our table and next step is to run a fresh migration since we made the changes in our migration files so we want to run php artisan migrate fresh which will delete everything and regenerate our tables so we need to create a new user to create a new post so let's do this and if we go to our database and look at the posts table now we have an image field which is type text and it could be null all right so that's most of the work and let's test it out so we want to go to the home page we don't have a user now let's create one very quickly all right press register and now let's create a post i want to say post one and some content choose that image again and press create we get our flash message and if we go back to our database and grab everything from posts we have the title the body and the path to that image and of course if we check under public storage post images we have that image we have the previous ones but we don't really need them and of course those are symbolic and the real photo or the real image is under storage app public and the rest so all is left is to show it in our postcards so we already know how to do that let's just go to postcard component and maybe right above the title i'm going to make a comment and say cover photo maybe inside the div we will have an image that would point to our posts images folder so again we can use the asset helper function and go to storage now the rest of this string is going to come from our database or posts table so we can concatenate that and use our post image column or property so if we save that one and go back to our website we have the image for every post so if we where to create another post and choose a file let's say this one and press create we get that image so it is working exactly the way we want and i'm not really concerned about the styles you can go ahead and style it the way you want the last thing i want to add is having a default image so remember we said that this field is not required that means if i create a post here and press create without an image we get the post but it doesn't look great with the other posts that have an image so what we can do we can have a default image so i'm going to delete this one because this is my default image and get rid of that go back to the home page and i'm gonna just paste that image inside the storage and then post images so not the symbolic link but the actual folder inside the storage then app then public then post images all right like this so i have 
this default image right here so that means in our postcard where we are showing the image we can just make this conditional and wrap it with an if else statement so i'm going to use an if else directive and say if the post image exists then use this image tag otherwise use our default image we can just hard code this one and say go to storage then posts images then default.jpg and let's go back and there we go so again styles are broken but that's fine we can do that in our own time so that's basically how we can upload an image or a file and then save the path in our database and of course show it in our views so that's it for this video guys in the next video we will talk about emails